Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Compiler Programming. Uh, what I'm going to do today is um, a bit tricky, so this episode will probably run a bit long. But the idea is now we have these nice functions and we can call them and everything is great, but they don't actually do very much. They just um, either take in the parameter and uh, return it to us or just return a, a static value back. Um, in order to do stuff, you generally need variables. So like when we define a variable like this in C, um, it will either be assigned to a register or assigned to a stack location. And assigning to a register is more or less an optimization. So if we actually, like, let's open up uh, our trusty compiler explorer. And if we look there, what happens when we create a function with a variable, you'll see that in, at least in debug mode, it should be assigned uh, a particular stack location. Uh, so, Let's have a function that, for example, takes in a value, then it has, would have another value foo, which is two, and then it will just multiply num by foo. Uh, let's wait for it to work. Yeah, so um, if we look at the generated assembly for, for this function, so what happens is um, we we take 42 here, this line, and put it into a stack location at offset 0. Um, and then we, for the number, that offset is 32 because um, basically we have the the size of the foo here, which is eight, I believe, and then we add another twenty four, which is part of the um, prelude of the function. So it's it can be quite confusing to look at this stuff without um, having an idea of uh, what goes where and what goes after what. Again we can uh, look up how it's supposed to work with um, with MSDN. So we have stack, let's just search for stack. Uh, this is not what I wanted to do. Stack convention, software convention stack. Let me try to go here and see if I can uh, find um, x64 stack usage. Yes, this this is what I'm looking for. Basically, this page describes how the stack is laid out um, for your program. Um, if you don't know what stack is, basically, whenever the program is um, run by the system, uh, it pre pre-applicates and gives it a region of memory that is used whenever you do any kind of computation in the functions used to uh, store like uh, return addresses of the functions, used to store parameters to from one function call to another function call. So if you hear people saving like do you allocate a mistake on the heap, this is uh, in reality only means like did you post that allocation part of the memory that um, system gave you right away when the application started and this is managed through some specific means or it was allocated in a different memory that was created for example uh, through virtual alloc or other system calls that you can make. Getting back to this, whenever one function calls another function, there is this uh, calling convention that we were talking about about uh, in the previous episode about what goes where and which parameters uh, go uh, into which locations. So if we drag this part over here and 
again for now we'll just look at the this version that only uses ints for 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 the calls then as it says the first four parameters they go into um, registers rcx rdx r8 and r9 and e says it's pushed in the stack and if you look into this diagram now um, then um, it will be pushed i believe right here or right here um, let me uh, try to figure this out so function a calls Yeah, I, I believe this is the area for this um, parameter E, but I'm not sure. Um, however, right now we are not interested in, in that. We are interested in uh, this, sorry, this area that is used for local variables, which is exactly what we are seeing with, uh, with our variable for and, and compiler explorer. Uh, it is a bit tricky to to manage this stuff because well, actually let's just let's just start with a simple version and then we'll see what what problems um, come up later as we as we develop this further. How do we do this? We create a new test, obviously. What will this test do? This is a very very interesting question. So let's just create uh, another helper function, and what uh, what shall it do? Well, yeah, let's just create something similar that we let, let, let's create our own increment function. We pass it a sixty four bit value, and it will increment by one. There is actually an assembly instruction to like increment a value in one go, so it's it's a bad uh, way to do it in in practice. But uh, right now we are just interested to have a simple setup to uh, accept an argument, have some another argument on the stack, and uh, sum those arguments and return the value back to to the caller. I think this will um, take a bit of time, so that's more than challenging for us for today. Let's say this is um, increment s64. Uh, we will say make increment. And this is also returns. And this is what returns. Okay. We Right now we'll just uh, have it return right away and obviously it will not do what we want. Actually we can keep the identity version so at least it does something. Uh, it should create a function that increments a value or increments x64 value passed to it. Great make increment as 64 and we call it in 64 in 64 result and we expect now result to be 43 if we run this this is probably not what's what the result is going to be uh build or new line in constant which was, ah yeah Forget that. Fine, build and build mess. Great, yep, it fails. Uh, I believe that uh, it will be 42. Let's bring in um, stdio just so that we can easily do printf debugging. We can also Open up the real debugger, but uh, sometimes I prefer one, sometimes I prefer another. Let's just uh, do percent L and 
um, result. And this. Oh, print heaven. Too many arguments first for formal string. What? Is it percent D? Mm, it's LLD. Okay. I very rarely use printf, so. Yeah. So, uh, as you see, we just get back what we got before, which is 42. Now let's let's create this function here. So let's call it increment now uh, diff is one and we say turn whoa, turn num plus one num plus foo which doesn't exist it should be num plus diff. Okay, this is quite a lot of stuff. So let's try to make sense of this. So this part, I believe, refers to uh, saving ECX into the home address, but I'm not sure. So we'll just like ignore this. Mm. Average P, okay, that's fine. So what this command does is it, we are subtracting 24 from stack pointer register and effectively this is reserving memory on the stack for our uh, variables. As I said, this just puts the variable at a particular location um, and then um, this loads it into register and it loads another variable and then we load our number into this register and <clears throat> we add them together and we move move it into the result i think all, a lot of this stuff is very redundant because you could just Like we, we, I think actually if I turn this around and say div plus num, then the whole assembly will be a bit smaller. No, it's not. So it, it still does this register shuffling. Um, anyhow, what do we need to do? We need to. Um, we definitely need to reserve some space for our variables, and then we need to actually move the our one into that space, and then we'll see exactly how we do the rest of the stuff. Because I don't want to do this register shuffling in uh, x sixty six and x sixty four. You can actually do operations where one of the operands is on a memory location so we should be able to just say uh, like add is uh, add ecx whatever mm, yeah let's see let's see let's just start doing something okay so what do we need? We need sub RSP and then number. Let's get our assembly, this is what we want. 64, okay. So this is the version of sub that um, accepts only one byte, so it's quite short, which is nice for us. Uh, for now, we will not try to allocate more than uh, um, 255 bytes of of stack storage so this is perfectly fine and um, do we want to do this 
since now the amount of instructions that we will start pushing in our function will begin increasing it might be a good idea to start having some kind of helper structures to uh, to manage our current offset in the uh, memory so maybe let's do that first we will need some kind of struct that will have let's call it an imaginatively buffer um, buffer will have a pointer to memory and it will also have um, let's just say s64 occupied and s64 capacity um, maybe we can even ignore capacity for now okay so we now need to create this buffer let me think how i want to do this yeah let, let's create a buffer star make buffer and it will accept the size of memory so um, 64 um, byte size and we will also say that we accept um, memory flex so it will just call virtual alex straight away and this memory flags will be what we will we are passing here actually have no idea what the type of it is but it will i guess it will tell us probably a d word um, okay so this is what we will do great we will say that now this is byte size and this stuff is memory flags Okay, we can make it slightly smaller. Then we say return um, const. Actually, it, this should be buffer like this, I guess. Mm. It's always a bit tricky in C to decide if you want to have to like return stuff by value or by per pointer because you need to figure out who will eventually own and clean up the memory but I guess for now we don't really care and all the buffer creations should be within one function I guess so this this is this is fine probably let's let's say this is like this and we return const buffer with our memory and then we have occupied will always be zero at the start and capacity Maybe we just call this variable capacity as well. And then we can go here, but here capacity is capacity. Okay. We have our buffer. Doesn't do anything, but it shouldn't break what we have before. Apparently it does. Yeah, I don't. I didn't have a declaration for u64 which we need to add this is u64 uh, let's try that again yeah so i thought that it is the word i always forget what it actually is Uh, the word 
double word. Great. So it's four bytes. It means it's, it's either S32 or U32. Let's try S32. Let's see if that works. Um, few pints. I can't spell. Too few arguments for a call. Is it no? Which call are you complaining about? This one. But it is exactly the same number. Of, ah, yeah. No, it's not. It is not. We need to do it like this. And then we should call this memory flags. We should call it um, permission flags. Yes, that's better. Um, what are you complaining about now? Warning, warning. Ring power 42. Okay. Great. Great, great. And we have buffer. Let's make some use of that buffer. So we'll say that we have buffer, buffer, is make buffer 1024, and then this stuff. And then we we also want to have some kind of helper methods to actually add bytes to to the buffer and then add different um, sort of add different values. Um, let's make them. Let's say buffer append. So we need to append u8, which so append bytes. It will not return anything. For now at least and then it accepts a pointer to the buffer and it also needs to accept the actual value so u8 of value and this one is quite easy we just um, say that buffer memory plus Buffer, 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 occupied is value, and that's it, I guess. And we can say buffer occupied plus plus or let's do it on a separate line buffer occupied as equals size of value um, even though the value is actually one byte I'm doing this because you know we can kind of copy this function and make a 32 bit version that will look very similar and it will be easier for us to let's see now we kind of don't have to change this line of code okay uh, for 32 bit version it's a bit more tricky because we want to get this address and i will do it in multiple steps so it's a bit easier to understand what's happening so we have this address at the end where we want to write uh, we say u8 star is um, so memory is this or it's called first free address just first non-occupied 
now we take this stuff and we convert this uh, to what we wanted to so it will be s32 um target is s32 star of this and then we say star target is value this is a bit of a yeah a bit complicated and i'm not even sure i got it right but we'll see okay so we have a pen function we have buffer let's try to oh this is not the shortcut i wanted to press we want to have buffer append actually it's not u32 it's s32 buffer append u8 uh, and then we have um, buffer and then we now can append these uh, values that we had before here so this is here it's fine So here we want our return value. Here we need the 32-bit version, so a 32. And because we previously we were doing basically the the same thing here as we were doing here, so now we, it will be nicely encapsulated inside this function. Hopefully, we don't have to think about this kind of stuff again. So we can just take value and pass it straight up to to here um, and this is like this and like this great and we say buffer memory i'm sure i made a mistake somewhere so let's see well it builds but does it blend Okay, so looks like I even did not make any mistake in, in this code. One thing that we want to do is um, add a check that... Uh, is it assert.h? I think it is assert.h, but let's see. So what I want to do is say assert that buffer uh, occupied plus size of value is less or equal to buffer capacity basically we just want to make sure that we don't go outside of the bounds of the memory that capacity and that we um, allocate it and the same thing Okay, it's fine, signed and signed mismatch. Um, should we turn this into S32? I guess, I guess we should do you here. Okay, and we still tell everything is fine. Now let's convert the identity function before we jump back to our increment. Okay, so we can copy paste this stuff here and just update the values that are necessary and there is no longer this thing. Uh, deleted there's something wrong. <coughs> Okay, should be like this. Great. Okay, builds. We still have this fail, but it's what we're expecting. And now we have 
sort of a ni nicer setup in the sense that we don't have to uh, manually figure out what are all of these indexes in memory and we can append different sizes and everything is just fine. So we can also take it to our new increment function. Great. Oh, sorry. Uh, just to adjust my microphone. Okay. Next step. What we were doing before we started to do this tangent with buffer is to try to have something on the stack. And as I said, we need to uh, sub kind of subtract some reserves some memory on the stack for our values. If we look here, right? Um, okay. And the reason I was I also wanted to do this buffer version is because now we can not just append uh, kind of individual values, but we can also say buffer append and then sub immediate eight. So sub, let's just say in register sub RSP immediate eight. Great. So this is what we want. And then we say S eight, which we probably need to add here. we can uh, do some nice stuff. So, and now we're gonna just use the functions we just created to do more appending. So buffer append again 48, which as I mentioned is prefix for 64 bits. Then we have um, opcode and mod rm bytes. Uh, we will uh, look into it a bit later what those actually are and uh, if we can like not hard code some numbers here but do something nicer in terms of how we generate these values and at least x86 part of the x8664 assembly is quite logical and quite structured so you can, we should be able to write an encoder for, for this stuff that um, is uh, quite small and quite understandable and uh, we will not need a um, majority of these numbers except for uh, the actual um, code of the instructions and maybe some extra information. But this will be way, way further into the development. Okay, uh, we have for now copy paste it is so this is the the actual instructions and now we need to append our value so we no longer do this i will comment this out for now because we will probably need to do the same instruction anyway when we because we need to return some value out of that function. But for now, uh, we are gonna remove this. We say buffer and we just copying stuff from our compiler explorer stuff. So we do the same 24. 24. Okay, that's good. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is move of value onto the stack. When I copy paste this here, it will actually not work because it doesn't know what this diff is. Um, instead, I believe I can do RSP plus zero.
keyword, keyword. Um, we, yeah, we are dealing with 32 bit version, so it's correct. What I was looking on is that here there is no 48 prefix, so it kind of operates in x86 mode, and, but this is perfectly fine because we only need to operate on 32 bit values for our stuff. So great, this is um, the code that we want. And I will also right away create a helper function to do it. And what it will be is um, buffer append move. We are moving to the location from the stack. So move to stack offset immediate 32. And now we need 32 bit value and we are doing this. And now that we have our nice helpers, instead of just typing these four bytes manually, we can uh, just pass our value to that. Okay, C704, 24, fine. Right, now we can use this function here to actually do what we want. So our offset is zero and our value is one. Next thing. So now we need to decide how we actually will do the the, the sum of, of these two values. Um, in, in this version they kind of do a lot of moving from stack to registers back to stack and then uh, transformation in the in, in registers and I think this just naturally comes out of the fact that internally um, almost all compilers use what is called uh, single static assignment form where kind of every variable is used only once which is used for optimizations but if you don't run that optimization pass then you end up with this kind of code where you, you sort of constantly move memory around even if you don't need to. Um, it's quite possible that we also will need to do that uh, ourselves, but uh, for now we can probably cut all of this quite a bit uh, by just saying, okay, we know that our value is, uh, this number is in the CX registers uh, and um, we know the location of the stack and I believe there is a version of add that just can take ECX and and to it something from the stack. And then we will just uh, hmm. then we'll just do this move ex ecx which we already have done in in the last episode for, for our identity function and that will be it. Okay. This part um I believe it's like we will also need to do this because if we reserve stack space, we also need to kind of give it back. Um, so we'll need to do that as well. For now, I need to try to write some assembly, which I'm not very good at, but we can, we'll try to manage. So we want to add RCX. actually ECX probably, but maybe RCX, uh, this value. Incorrect register CX used without L suffix. Okay. Um, let's look at this. So what I want is add of register and register memory 
to um should I do this version? Yes, yes, okay. So it was just complaining that on the right side we had 32 bit value, but on the left side we were having only uh, we were having 64 bits and it was I think it was a bit confused about that. Okay. This seems pretty straightforward. I'm not sure though, like if I do plus eight, will it change the extraction? Yeah, I think I will use this version and just put zero here because I want something a bit more general than just exactly at our RSP. Great. Again, all the same, all the same stuff that we did before. We say band at um what is it ecx add to ecx um value at stack offset there, there is a standard terminology for all these things are called but it's also Quite confusing and I don't want to um, kind of uh, do it all at once at some point we'll learn how, how this actually is supposed to be called and as I said like right now we are doing this sort of instruction by instruction by instruction which is not how it will be at the end but we need to make progress so this is how it is add to ECX value at stack offset and we have this nice um, Code for us. So we have zero three or C twenty four and value. Great. And this is the next thing we are doing. So we are um we are painting to CX. By the way, here we need. Buffer and do I accept actually two values here? No, I yeah, and here it's actually there should be S oh should be S eight of offset. And then the actual value, and I you know I don't remember in which order they go. So let's try that back. Ah, he doesn't remember, but we can do that again. So move assemble. Okay there is no offset. So I again need to do the same sort of trick that I did to check what would be the version of this instruction that actually does accept the offset, which is slightly different from what we have probably. Yeah, it's 4424. And then there is goes this offset and then the value. <coughs> um, you might be wondering how we'll reach back this stuff. Well, hopefully we can go into assembly and see um, like if the commands that this assembler actually shows us match what we expect, uh, but it, it is a bit um, fun and annoying at the same time to debug this kind of stuff. Anyway, going back at offset zero mm, and what else? So we added stuff now as I said, we want to have uh, this thing. For now, let's just keep it as a comment and then I will later extract it into function. So this is move um, rax rcx and then return. And 
we also need to have this add RSP24. So let's let's do that as well. Add RSP24 and um, where is our sub? And there is being needed eight, it's 48, 83, C4, and value. As you can see, like if you carefully examine these two statements, you will see that uh, what, what I mentioned about the commons having quite regular structure. So add and subtract are basically the same actual opcode with different extensions um, to differentiate kind of plus and minus and all of that will be more visible once we start encoding this in a better way later on okay so we have this we have sub now we need to put end and see it failed to compile. Buffer append. Right. And then here, of course, it's mm. buffer that memory. Mm. Yeah. I do need to. Okay, the build is successful, but I'm pretty sure I did something wrong. So uh, let's try to get our stuff in and I will try to get to the assembly of all of that. So here's this, and we can say F5, five. Okay, so the first three pass as expected, and now we can go into assembly and see what actually happens. So move. Um, I believe we somehow ended up after call already, or maybe not. Um, so how do I step over line? Let's see. F. No, this is not what I wanted. Uh, control. Step over instruction. Control. Shift. Ten. Why doesn't it? So. Put it here. Um, hmm. So it didn't crash at least. Look at that. I actually was did everything right straight from the start. It's a bit annoying that I can't see the disassembly of this generate function. This is something I will need to figure out how to what to do. Let me try to do that again. So our function is in S64, so what is a this is the address of that thing? Uh, can I go to to there somehow? So this is this call. Run to cursor. 
then I want to step into instruction. And this is where it gets really, really confused. Yeah, it doesn't kind of it doesn't know how to how to jump into that. So maybe we'll need to look for a different debugger and I will report the bug to to the creator of this tool. Anyhow, uh, this is actually more important because we don't need to debug because everything was fine. So let's take a look at what we have. I also wanted to extract this move rex rcx into a separate function that we can call um, later. So append move uh, to rcx from rex, and we don't need any arguments for this because it's kind of a static function. And it goes here, we don't need this, and but we don't need this, and we need just pass it the buffer. And we can use it here. Value undeclared identifier. Yeah, there is no value. Did they copy paste the right thing? I don't know. We'll find out in a second. I did copy paste the right thing. Okay, let's recap what happened. I know I'm kind of going a bit of a um, high speed here, but let, let's just let's just go through it. So we now have this buffer that we can use to automatically keep track uh, in our array, so we can uh, have correct sets. And then, if you kind of ignore this part and squint real hard at the other part of the code, it kind of looks like what we have here. Uh, so we are starting to implement assembly instructions that we can more easily reuse. Um, one thing that you might notice is we have repetition of metrical constants. So here we have this 24 and here 24, and here we have this zero and it goes again zero. And um, this is something that we'll need to also extract and automate, which is keeping track of the size of the um, stack that we need for each of the functions and where in that uh, stack those uh, those values are located so that we can refer to them by their, um, by their for example, by their names instead of just these offsets that we have to keep manually track of. Uh, this is something we'll tackle in later videos. And the other thing is uh, we we need to do something better about this. Right? There's going to be a lot of functions. Like if we create a function for um, each possible combination of parameters to well, to those assembly instructions, that will be quite a lot of functions. So um, uh, this is another task that we have to handle. But those are kind of completely separate, so I'm not sure which one I will tackle first. We'll we'll see later. I guess that's it for today. Let's again see nicely passing tests and thank you so much for watching. See you next time.